Hello, my name is David Webb, and this is a video for Dweebovision. I am a Scrabble Grandmaster, and in this video I am going to play Scrabble while providing in-game commentary on my moves. Hopefully this will help to improve your game, and be fun to watch. The game has just started, so let's join the action. I've got the queue, but I've got no way of playing it, but this rack is too good to change. I'd like to play off a lot of tiles to increase my chances of drawing an I or a U to go with the Q. And the possibilities, I think, are Probe or Rebop starting at H8. I don't think there's much between them. And keeping the A and enables me to play Cat if I draw a T. I do draw a T, and Cat will enable me to split up my duplicate A. I don't have a bingo with this rack, and I would not have one through a floating U, so my priority is to play off the Q. If a U were to be played, I may be able to play key Q-U-A-Y. Great, I can play Cat in column 5. Is there anywhere else for it? And I also have on my rack Talak. Now, is there somewhere good for Talak? I don't think there is. I could play it through the A of Avo in row F. But that wouldn't score as much as Cat. Now through an N I would have Canats, there is no N, so I think I've exhausted the possibilities. Not a great rack, it's not bingo-y, but it's not a problematic rack. I've got scoring tiles in the F and the Y, and I'll have a number of options available with this rack. Folly, Flay, Leafy, all spring to mind. Pro certainly takes a D and an S on the end. I'm not 100% sure if it takes an R. I, I don't need to concern myself with that right now because I don't have an R. Tech, only five points, that's good. Now, how can I best sort this rack out? I could play Leafy in column 7, making Tay. That opens up the triple word square at A8. 18 points, so that's not bad. And this isn't a great board in terms of opportunities. But what about playing down from the P or the R of Probe? I could play Pally. I've got the poly prefix. Poly leaf is not good. I could play really, but both of those moves burn the Y but keep the F. I'd like to get rid of the F and the Y because they're both non bingo -y tiles. So, I'm, well, I'm thinking about playing Flay. Twenty points. Now that doesn't expose the triple word square at A8 in a particularly dangerous fashion because it doesn't place a vowel next to the double letter square at D8. It's not great keeping the vowel excess. So I could play foil F O Y L E. What would that score? Let me just refresh my memory. 20 points for Flay. Fifteen points for Foil. Okay, I think Flay is better. And 
that's pretty good. I may have a seven letter bingo. And I'm sure there'll be some eights. But will there be one through a floater on the board? And will I spot it? 41 points for my opponent. And another floater in the Z. Can't see anything through that. Okay, so I need to consider the floaters. I'm looking at the P of probe. Can't see anything there. What about the R? No, can't see anything there. And then there's the T and C of tech. Torcule, I don't think, is good. But maybe there's an anagram of that. Chura coal, perhaps? Don't think so. And what about the C, which duplicates a tile on my rack? This would be an expensive miss if there's a bingo here and I don't see it. Well, I, I can't see it, so I'm now looking to sort the rack out. And in particular, I wish to get rid of the U. How can I do that? My only scoring tile is the C, but that's quite a bingo -y tile, so I'm not anxious to get rid of that. I could play Polaker down from the P of Pro, but that's not going to leave a good rack leave. I'm wondering if I can play through the Z. I'd like to sort out the vowel consonant balance. Now, I'm wondering about playing down in column 9. So I could play Oracle. Okay. Oracle, that's 29 points. Hold on, let me just open the door. Right, I'm back. So, do I play Oracle? I hope I haven't missed something through the T. Well, I think 29 points is a big, big score. And I'm quite glad I did keep the U now, since this rack is um, pretty awful. I'm pretty Val deficient. But it uh, will be resolvable. The Y axis is a surrogate vowel. And this board is, is quite blocked. I'm looking in column 10 to see if I can play parallel to Oracle. I could place my. I could play Dupli, D U P L Y making Ed, that would score pretty well, and leave a rack leave of GR, which is an improvement on this rack. I've got 12 and a half minutes left, and there are 61 tiles in the bag. And I have a 45 point lead. I think the prober hook has disappeared with the play of tech as a matter which may make me have to think. Pudgy would be a nice play, but there are limited opportunities on this board. 
There's column 10, and it's playing down from the P and the R of probe. I could play pulpy, keeping GRD. That's not uh, too bad. 24 points. Well, I think that's good. I will check it. Yep. Okay, that puts my opponent 21 points in the lead. Do I have a bingo through any of his floaters? My rack's pretty un unpromising, but one should always check, in particular through the vowels. Well, that's really just... Well, it's the I and the U. I could place my D above the U. Now, my opponent has blocked my dupli spot. Now, shall I play down onto the S of cursing? What about splurgy? Gosh. I don't have... Well, I have some doubt about this. But if it's in, it's going to be a great play. 42 points and a decent rack leave. And either this is good or something similar is. Let's find out. It won't be a disaster if this comes off. It stays on. Wow. Okay, that may not mean it's good. My opponent may have assumed it was good. And we're dead level. 136 points each. And I've got a... A, a, a terrible route, three Ds. Now I could play podded and get rid of all of them, keeping KT, which wouldn't be a bad lead. The K is a good scoring tile and the board is opening up. Can I do better than that? I certainly don't want to retain two Ds. Well, I could play kidded, that's certainly better. Or I can play Kiddo, keeping D-E-T. Kiddo for 32. If I played Kid Ed, I would get four more points. And a rack leave of T-O. Hmm, well... There are quite a lot of E's left, but the E is a good tile, and getting it duplicated isn't a problem. So I think I will keep this more bingo-y rack leave. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But do I have a bingo? Through an I, which I've just blocked, I would have nematoid or dominate. I would have nematode onto an E or through an E. That's not available. Now I must keep an eye out for row A. Zoo has been played and there are quite a lot of eight letter words beginning zoo. Can't see one with my current rack but I need to pay attention with future racks. Now, what about the D of kiddo? Do I have anything onto that? It's always irksome to miss a bingo. And this rack feels bingo-y. There may even be a seven here. And I've still got the U of cursings available for a word beginning. Well, D, S, or possibly R. So, outnamed. If Probe took an O, I could have outnamed, but I'm not uh, sure of that. Well, I can't see a bingo. Which is a shame. I'm only 32 points ahead. You thought that might have been a bingo. It's only 19 points, which is good. So what do I do? I note that my M can go next to the U of Uridine. So 
so mod 25 points do I want to use my M after zoo just wondering if any vow any of my vowels go after or and I don't think they do 25 points not huge is there an, but the M is my least bingo -y tile it's also my scoring tile so it probably is the right tile to play do I have anything through the R of cursings I'm looking again back at a bingo and I don't uh, I need to be careful about the time as well so I've got mordant plus an E moderant not good well if I've missed a bingo it'll be high probability well I'm certainly not seeing it matroned well matroned nope pretty sure that's not good right I have Avontred in row K as a double double onto an E I would have venerate or enervate through an R I would have taverna but the R of cursings is not in the right place and nor is the R of probe as a seven I've got veteran great Avontred stays available fantastic this is going to be a massive score ninety eight points fantastic and my reward is the second blank so can I have back-to-back -back bingos this is a, a very promising letter set Kiddo, I think, takes an S at the end, but it might just be an ES ending. Well, I've got ghosting in row N, so that's my baseline bingo. Do I have anything onto the Y of splurgy? Well, maybe. This isn't... I'm sure there are loads of bingos with this rack. But the, the rack doesn't look like it goes well with a Y in last place. Nearly unsightly, but I would need one more tile. So at the moment I've got ghosting. There may be a long word through zoo. That would be pretty exotic. Great. Challenged by my opponent. I now have a 115 point lead. My opponent's changed. Great. Now I'm looking at column 14 onto the G of cursings. I haven't seen anything, but this works. So do I have anything which goes... Ghosting doesn't quite work because of Muo. Sighting doesn't quite work. Okay that's enough of that so what about through zoo well no actually a non bingo through zoo which reached a 15 and didn't use the blank would probably be better than playing ghosting I've only got seven minutes left but I, I have got a bingo in my pocket with ghosting but am I missing a better spot? The V takes out roads J and L because it doesn't take a tile before or after it. Kiddo may take an S. But I think that I will not risk that. Ghosting isn't a hugely dangerous play. The G doesn't take too much underneath it. Well, 
like a blade gasting. Only 74 points. I think ghosting's better. So, have I missed something better than this? Well, possibly, but I'm quite uh, glad that I've had back-to-back -back bingers. Always a good feeling. And nearly a third, but not quite. So, what can I do with this rack? I'm 190 points ahead, which is a good lead. Onto a T, I would have Twilight. Great, so I could play Willy in row O, making G-I. What else is there? I certainly want to play in row O, I think. It's a good spot for me, and it's a good spot for my opponent. And Willy keeps out, which does have synergy, and there's only one O and no U's left. And GI takes nothing in front, so this were, this move has a lot of merit. Now I am providing a really hot spot above my the first eye of Willy for the X. But that's not going to prevent me winning, and I may in any event draw the X myself. Yes! Fantastic. So, I've got Wox in row N. That's going to score a lot. Can't see anywhere else amazing for my ex. And Willie scored 30 points, which is a lot. Ah, oh dear. Tragedy. But I have got Roel. I've got the A of Avontred, which can take an X underneath it. Nat takes a G in front. And actually my, well, it's not a very good bingo lane, but my opponent has opened a bingo lane in column three for a word with G in penultimate place, but I suspect that's not why he did it. So, I can play Jux. Probably not how the French, French pronounce it, but anyway. 45 points, that's pretty good. Rackley, pretty good. Anywhere better. I don't see any particular merit in playing off the J and the X on separate moves. This board isn't particularly uh, full of opportunities for either letter. Forty-five points. Yep, I think that's fine. And this is not uh, bingo-y, but it's the end of the game and it's balanced and I've got scoring tiles, so it's pretty good. My opponent may well have the O to go underneath the J. If he doesn't, I'm drawn to that spot. I could play Hom. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at this. Look at this. Zuthome. I hope this is good. I think it is. 78 points, fantastic, if it's good. And yes, stays on, fantastic. And I've got um, W, double E, I'm sure I'll have several places to play that. My opponent doesn't go out, fantastic. So I have three and a half minutes to find the best possible spot for this. So we goes here. That is 27 points. I've got you here, 30 points. Anything better? I don't think so. It looks. I'm just scanning the board for where my W might score well, but I think it's already in its best spot. And that concludes that. So, final score, 238 to my opponent, 560 to me, a winning margin of 300 and... 
22 points. So huge, huge win. Let's see what I missed. So good to win by a big margin. Now, Probe and Rebot with a plays. I think Probe is fine. And I played Cat at D5. Yep, that looks best. Foil, that's what I was thinking about at C9, but didn't play. I didn't like the idea. Actually, I wasn't. I was thinking about playing it in column 7. But if you play it in column 9, then you are putting a vowel next to a double letter square at D8, which is providing a big scoring opportunity. So what did I do? I did Flay for 20, and I think I still like that. Well, my opponent has Skazons. Fortunately, he didn't bingo. Now, this is where I may have missed something. Ooh, I did. Opercula. Okay. Well, that was a miss. Didn't cost me the game. But it's a miss. And what did I do? I did Oracle for 29. Um, Oracle is a fine move. But compared to a bingo with 74 points, um, this was a big miss. And Splurgy was good, so I'm delighted that I had the confidence to play that. And this is where I was debating between uh, Kidid and Kid O, and I think Kid O is better. Always good to have an E in your rack leave because it's so bingoy. Great, I didn't want to have two missed bingos, and I didn't. This is a very bingo-y looking rack, but there wasn't a playable bingo. Now what's being suggested is a whole bunch of five and six out of plays, but they wreck the rack leave. And if you can avoid wrecking the rack leave with a bingo-y rack, I think you should do so. I think mod achieves that end. It's sacrificing ten points compared to the best moves but the rack leave is a lot better. So it's actually probably pretty close. But let me say that um, when you analyze games, the computer analysis always assumes that you never miss a bingo. Um, real life people like me do miss bingos. So there's actually um, merit in preferring moves with better rack leaves because then they're more likely to give rise to higher probability bingos. Now, I've just done mod and this is where I was uh, delighted to have a Vontred which was the only playable bingo. And my opponent did not have a good rack and M7. Okay, so Kiddo does take an S. I could have played Nyast for 88. Instead, I played Ghosting for 74, so I sacrificed 14 points, and strategically, it probably wasn't as good. So, actually, this is quite a big miss. Um, it's probably worth 15 to 20 points of equity, which is a lot. But it never feels that bad when you're being... Suboptimal bingos don't feel as bad as missed bingos or suboptimal other plays. But all missed equity points represent points lost. So the miss was, um, was a significant one. Now I could have played Ewe at 0-6. Well, yeah, there's not going to be much between Ewe and Willy. Ewe sacrifices three points just to keep a good Rackley, uh, a good vowel consonant balance. Maybe there's more going on there. I don't really understand why Ewe is preferred to Willy. Well, nice rack for my opponent. He's got Tonnage and Negaton, but nowhere to play them. 
Jer for 45, that looks best. Well, nice rack for my opponent, but I don't think there's any bingo opportunities. Yes, Zeus aim for 78. I think that's the first time I've ever um, played that word, so I'm delighted that uh, I spotted it and it scored so well. Horrible rack for my opponent. And you for 30 points. So, overall, what a great game. It's always, um, I mean, you play Scrabble to win, you play any game to win. And Scrabble, you can get something out of it, whether you win or you lose. And there are various ways of consoling yourself if you lose. But, at, uh, but Scrabble is a game and winning is a great feeling, which is why you uh, play it. And this was a massive victory. So I hope you enjoyed watching that and got something out of it. My name is David Webb and this has been a video for DweepoVision.